Hi all and welcome to another uh, Lunar Lander tutorial or actually the uh, semi-final Lunar Lander tutorial in this series. Um, we're going to be tying up uh, all sorts of loose ends, adding in some good stuff like audio, um, as you see in this little preview here, uh, making it look much prettier, uh, and various other little things like that. And then there may be one final tutorial later on, uh, but it's more of a uh, sidetrack with some more advanced bits and pieces that's not really necessary to the to the series, but might be fun to go through some things. So for all intents and purposes, this is the final Lunar Lander tutorial, so get ready to uh, take your game to the finished uh, finished enough <laughs> level. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing here. Um, obviously adding in some nice things like a title, uh, uh, the um, customized GUIs doesn't look so ugly and simple as before. Uh, if we go into that, uh, we'll have an actual score uh, that, that will be updated. Uh, noises for the ship as it moves. Same thing if we land. Uh, sounds for if we explode and a little title for that. Um, and then we'll also have uh, a success uh, success title and then the ability to uh, save your score to the player prefs again so that as you go, um, just like the levels between each level, it'll save through and then you'll uh, be able to keep your uh, high score essentially. Okay, so uh, let's get on to that. So if we go back to the original old one here, uh, first thing we want to do is get that title screen looking like something, uh, <laughs> like anything really. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the backgrounds in the main levels, is just a uh, quick drop in. Uh, just a, a backdrop, so I'll put in a plane and rotate it up to face the camera and scale it so it fills the viewport pretty well. And again, just exactly as we did for the, uh, the levels, I'm going to drag and drop uh, a texture onto it that looks good, uh, one of the background textures. Again, these are special because they're just a simple unlit texture, which is what you want for this. So we have a background that's looking pretty nice. Uh, then we want to put in some sort of uh, like a title text or a logo, like the uh, the lunar lander that we saw in there in, in the preview. So I've created some, and you're free to create your own, of course. Uh, in the uh, in the GUI folder now, we have these title uh, textures. There's a success, a failure, and a title. Uh, one thing, if you create your own, make sure when you import them, uh, you set them to GUI and not texture. Makes a big difference, so make sure that they are set on that and then hit apply. And we'll go ahead and drop in the main title texture here. So if you just select the title and then go game object, create other GUI texture, and it drops it in just like that. Uh, if you happen to, if I delete that, uh, if you happen to uh, just do create other and then GUI texture and you don't have one selected, it'll come in with just the standard uh, Unity texture there. And then all you do is um, select that texture, of course, or the GUI texture, and over in the inspector, drag and drop in the uh, whatever texture you'd like. So in this case, it's the title. Uh, of course, if that happens, you'll notice that it's not the right size, yada yada, so uh, it's a little bit uh, more trouble. Uh, try to always, you know, select the uh, texture first and then use the um, create option. Uh, there we go. And then it comes in just perfect. So you can uh, move these GUI textures around uh, with no problem simply by dragging around on the arrows. Like so. And if you uh, turn on this little uh, background icon here, it'll show it in your viewport as well. I usually like to leave that off and just see it in the uh, the game view here. So I can move it around with that and get it to uh, some spot that looks looks good for what you'd like. Uh, a couple things you can do with this. You can change the color if you like. Um, again, this is while I have the title selected and then in the inspector under color, I can just go through here and add sort of an overlay color to this, uh, which is sometimes, you know, uh, good to do for ambiance, or if you just want to make a couple different textures, we'll do that with the uh, failure and success later on. Uh, if you change the alpha down below, that's going to change how see-through it is. So, uh, 128 is middle of the road, and and that's usually uh, the actual um, 
opacity that it comes in from if you're saving it from Photoshop or anything like that. So it's usually uh, best to keep it right there. Anything above will give it some hard edges, and anything below is fine if you want it to be uh, to be more see-through. So there we have our title texture, uh, a background, and then we just want to make this uh, GUI look a little bit better, actually a lot uh, better than it currently does. So we're going to do this by using a GUI skin, and I have one created here in my GUI folder already. Uh, you can create your own simply by right-clicking in the project, uh, project area there, and go create and a GUI skin, and just name it, um, let's create this new one called My New GUI Skin. Uh, the name doesn't matter as usual, um, just anything that will work well for you. Uh, okay, so you have your GUI skin and we're going to set that up so it will apply to uh, the GUI that we have in game. Uh, so if you open up your GUI script, the main menu script in this case, and let's create a variable to hold that GUI. Let's say variable uh, my GUI. And the type is a GUI skin. And then in the on GUI function, we're going to tell it to use that GUI. So GUI.skin equals my GUI. Save that. And back to the editor. Alright, so nothing has changed yet because the new skin we created is the exact, uh, it's a copy of the very default one. So we need to go ahead and edit that and also add it to. Uh, of course our variable here. So first I'll drag in the new GUI skin right onto that, onto the variable there. And then we can go ahead and start editing that uh, GUI skin. So the main thing we'll want to do is in the font, uh, we want a different font more than just this Arial. So I have this uh, Orion Pax font that I found and kind of like, it looks cool I think. Um, if you go to uh, sites like dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, just, of course, check the licenses on that, um, you know, again, going back to the legalities and such, to make sure it's free to use, uh, or at least free for personal if you're not going to do anything commercial with it. Uh, so we can take that font, just grab it from the project folder, and drag it right into the font at the top. Oops, I uh, didn't mean to open that toggle up. So uh, dragging it right into the top font, and that's going to override the font for all options within the GUI, buttons, toggles, labels, etc. So now, as we can see here, it's changed and it's showing the new font. Uh, we do have another problem now. Um, our GUI is not large enough for this new font. So let's go into that GUI script again and change just a couple things. Uh, the problem here is that the width of the buttons uh, is only 150, which is not enough. And I can go through with each of these and change it to, I think, 225 is probably a good number. Go back in here. Yep, there we go. So 225 looks pretty good. Um, however, if I had a lot of options, that could be uh, get pretty painful. Uh, also, we now have uh, the button is not centered correctly because this number here is half of this button width, actually. So we'll create an extra variable to make this a little more uh, streamlined, and I'm just going to call this button width, make that an integer, and I'll set it at 225 to start. So now what I can do is just copy-paste, of course, that button width into the width field here, and for this, it will actually be button width divided by 2. So that way, no matter what we change the button width to, it'll always update that GUI properly, and we only have to change it in one place instead of everywhere. Save that. And there we go. So it's updated. It's in the right place. I can change this up and down as I need to. So it's just a nice, handy way of keeping things uh, clear. Okay, so we have our um, new GUI going. Uh, a couple things we can do with this. Let's go back to the uh, GUI skin. And if you go down to the button area here, this is the one we're dealing with right now. Uh, and this will apply to any of these other options or the basic uh, uh, items within here well. So uh, it's usually pretty um, self-explanatory, but we have the normal hover and active options are the most important ones. So normal is the color, 
that it's going to be when it's you know just sitting there uh, waiting for any kind of input. And we set that on blue for some reason, uh, and then on hover is what it's going to be when you hover over it. And I'm just going to give these a nice crazy color so you really see what's happening as we do it. Uh, feel free to choose a, a few more aesthetically pleasing colors. So we hover, we get that green. If we click down, we get the red. I'm going to drag off so we don't end up starting a new game yet. So sure enough, that all works fine. Uh, and again, feel free to use a little better color scheme than that if you like. Uh, you can set your own um, textures to be the button background if you like, but it's a little trickier. Um, something we definitely get into in a different tutorial um, all about Unity GUI. Uh, if they don't replace the system soon, which they are, uh, there's rumors and hints that they might, so we won't get into that just now. Anyway, we have our colors for that, um, and again, that all applies to the toggles, labels, etc. So, uh, customized GUI, that's looking nice. Um, we'll go on to adding some audio to the game then, uh, and for that, I'm going to save this main scene and open up the uh, actual level scene here. Okay, so we want to add some, uh, let's say we'll start with the audio on landing on any of the uh, landing pads. So uh, we can select a landing pad, and actually just in case since, especially uh, right here I have you know these landing pads oriented in two different directions, and if I were to make a large change to one and I wanted the change to apply to the prefab and every single one throughout all my scenes, which you definitely want to do so you don't do this every time, uh, in that case, I'm going to make the change to the prefab and not to the actual item in game. Um, so I'm going to, with this selected in the hierarchy, I can click select in the inspector and it'll jump right to the prefab in the project folder. Uh, and on here, I'm going to add a audio, so under component, audio, and a audio source onto that landing pad prefab. And we will, uh, we don't want it to play on wake. Um, obviously, only when the player lands on it, it should be activated. Uh, and the audio should be in your audio folder. Um, and we're going to choose the short activate audio. Uh, one thing with these um, uh, audio bits that you have, make sure that their 3D sound is turned off in this case. If you have a game that you definitely want 3D sound on, uh, by all means, turn that on. Uh, but in this case, we really don't want that. So I'm going to check that off on each of these. Alright, okay so our landing pad now has a uh, audio source and that is on there, it's not play on wake, uh, should be good to go. Now we just need to edit the script so that it actually plays that uh, on the activation. So right here within function activate we can very simply say audio.play, save it, and now it will simply play whatever audio is the default audio source right on this object. So if I hit play and then navigate my ship over there, sure enough, once we land, we get that uh, audio playing right there. So simple enough. Um, let's see, we can add the audio to the explosions next. Uh, this will do a little bit differently uh, since the explosions are actually handled by the detonator in this game. So under your detonator folder, uh, let's see, or actually explosions, my bad, uh, choose each of the um, detonators that you have if you made your own or if you're using the original still and go component. Detonator should be in there since we have that in our uh, files and then add on the sound component. And then for each one, under the sound component, uh, we'll want to just add a near sound and a far sound. You can actually use as many sounds as you want for each of these. And what Detonator will do is decide how far away the camera is from the sound and use the near or far, which can be nice to have. Uh, again, in this simpler game, it's not really a big deal, but we just want to make sure that you have uh, at least one sound in each of these. it will just choose randomly from uh, the list, whichever uh, that you have in here. So find a couple if you like, um, otherwise we have the simple explosion no debris sound you can drop right in there. And we'll do that for each one. Drop on a component sound. And 
and the that. Making sure we have a sound in there. If you don't have anything in there, it'll air out and not be pretty, so make sure there's again just at least one sound in there. Okay, so those are set. Let's give it a quick test. If we move up and then smash that ship down, sure enough, we got audio. Okay, so that works just fine. Um, let's see, we want to do audio on win and audio on lose. So in this case, if we open up the GUI script, the in-game GUI script, which we added on the uh, function win and function lose items here, we'll add a on the win audio dot play, and the same thing for lose. Uh, the audio dot play for lose I'll actually put after the wait for seconds, um, so that way it plays uh, right after the explosion has gone off and when the actual uh, GUI pops up saying you lose. So we'll drop it after that yield there. Uh, now what we have is again something a bit different with the audio, uh, trying to teach all these different methods. Uh, oh, and don't forget the semicolon. Okay, there we go. Um, in this case, we can't simply do audio.play because it will only play the default audio that's on there. So we need to choose a different clip when it plays. So on win, we're going to say audio.clip equals win clip. And win clip is going to be a clip that we will create in a variable up above in a second. And we're going to do something the same for the lose. So we're just setting the clip to use instead of just a default equals lose clip. Let's go back up to the top and we will drop in a variable win clip. Audio clip is the type and the same thing for the lose clip. Alright, and of course on the in-game GUI we'll also have to add a audio source component. Turn off the play on wake. And now in the win clip and lose clip we'll drop in win for win of course. And I have a fail, a nice and cheesy fail uh, audio we can drop in there. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the tricky bit for the audio is last. Uh, we want the uh, audio to work on the thrusters when the ship is moving around. So this is something that just when I was building it seemed like it'd be awfully simple but ended up being just all sorts of trouble. Uh, luckily I've built it a couple times now and found a fairly good way uh, of doing this. So what we have is whenever uh, basically any key left, right, up, or down is pressed. We want the uh, like uh, the engine noise to play, and as soon as it's released, we want it uh, to stop playing. So uh, I found a pretty simple and uh, generally fail-proof way is just to test in a separate location than all these inputs, because that can get a little confusing and be some um, just code being repeated over and over. So in here, I'm just going to check for uh, and I'm sorry, I don't know if I mentioned I'm in the player controller script, of course, right now for the ship. Uh, so in this script, we just want to check if any of these axes are being pressed down. So we'll do input dot get axis vertical, and I'll just say if it does not equal zero. And then we use these two. Um, it's the uh, the key above your enter key, so it's normally the uh, the backslash. But if you hold shift and hit it, you get these two vertical bars, and that for whatever crazy me reason uh, means or in Unity JavaScript. So if input that, uh, that get access vertical does not equal zero, or input that get access oops horizontal does not equal zero.
So if either or any of the four keys are currently down in this frame, um, we can play the sound. But of course, we don't want to keep replaying it over and over and over. We want to simply play it. Uh, since this song, uh, this song sound uh, is set up for looping, we just want to uh, keep it playing. Uh, so restart it if it stops. We can say if not audio dot is playing. And what that will do is check if basically the audio isn't playing. So the default audio clip, if it's not playing, then we'll say audio dot play. Just like that. And uh, this actually, just so I'm not teaching bad habits, uh, if you have only one item after an if, you can technically just drop it down right after like that without the brackets, the curly brackets, but it's generally lazy, bad to do, so uh, don't do that. <laughs> Always keep the brackets, especially if you ever need to add something else in there. It's just good to have the, uh, the brackets already set up. Okay, so if we're getting any keys down and the audio is not playing already, then we're going to tell it to play. Otherwise, if Uh, if the audio is already playing, uh, but of course, uh, again, just to go backwards through this in case it didn't make enough sense. Uh, so if the, all, any of the buttons are down and the audio is playing, play. Otherwise, if no buttons are down, basically, um, and in this case, so it's a <laughs> uh, else if uh, audio is playing. Oops, if I can type. Those else ifs can seem a little confusing sometimes. So if no buttons are down and audio is playing, then uh, we want to stop the audio. Stop the audio. OK, so that should, in theory, work. Oops, I hate it when that happens. Looks like we forgot a semicolon somewhere in here. Aha, there we go. Anything else it wants to yell at us about? Nope, these yellow things again we can just ignore. Uh, and let's make sure, of course, that there is a audio source on the, the ship. So under component with the ship selected, Add on the audio source. If it's not there already, turn off the play on wake. And we'll want to drop in the engine noise audio clip. And make sure you hit apply on that one so that it uh, applies to all the other ships in your level. So it should be good to go right away. And let's give this a test and see if it works. Sure enough, we've got audio. Sounds good. Okay. So, the um, semi-tricky bit, uh, maybe I just say tricky because I dealt with all sorts of other methods that were terrible and eventually I found this one that worked. It might have been the first thing to come to mind for anyone else, but uh, anywho, that bit is done. We've got the, um, the audio playing for the ship for when we land on the, uh, the power stations, uh, win and lose. So, uh, doing good on audio. I think we can move on to displaying a score for the game. So with a score, we'll do something a lot like the uh, GUI textures, um, except we'll use a simple GUI text. And with this, if we um, just close these in the project, if you open up your GUI folder, uh, we have the Orion Packs and Orion Packs large um, fonts, or if you have any others, yours. Uh, and we'll just go to, uh, after selecting that, just like the, uh, the textures, it's best to select the font first. So select that, and then game object, create other GUI text. And that'll drop in a GUI text object right into your level using that font. Uh, and I'm going to name this to score text. And we have the font already set up. Uh, we can set the text uh, from the inspector right here. I'm going to say it is score dash zero. The score will start out as. Uh, I'd like the anchor to be the upper center and the alignment to be center. And just like the GUI texture, I can simply move this around using the arrow keys. 
Although in this case we have something a little bit different. Um, since I want the score always to be right at the very top and not get too far away from it, uh, one thing you can do is to uh, set it not via the transform, if we just set this to 1 so it's stuck to the very top, and then using the pixel offset, uh, if you change the Y value, which is up and down, that will move it just by exact pixel numbers uh, up and down. So if I set this to 1, it will always be exactly one pixel off from the very top. Uh, so sometimes it's handy, sometimes not. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use it that way because I want it to be uh, exactly uh, at the top there always. Okay, so I have my score text uh, showing there. I'm going to create one more and I'm going to call this the, uh, let's say, score text underscore total. Oops, total. And with this one, I'm going to drag it down on the Y just a bit, so it's below the other. And I'm going to drag in the large font onto that. So with a large font, all we want to do is, in the inspector with it selected, change the font size to be something, in this case, a little larger. And it'll show up just like that. Uh, pretty simple to change those around. Uh, sometimes, you know, I've always wished that the score text would have, or, or the GUI text would have a way simply to change the uh, font size right within here, but uh, nothing I've seen that works well. Um, I guess I've seen you can use a, a different character style and then change it sometimes, but uh, from what I've seen at least, when you run, you'll run into issues if you were using this on Android or iOS. So um, I just keep it this way, a little more work, but. Um, it ends up better sometimes, uh, in my experience. Okay, so we have a score text total. Uh, let's change this to, say, uh, total score. And the regular level score above this. Uh, and the total score, we'll actually want to hide that for now, since it's only going to show up when we win the level. So if we turn off the little checkbox in the GUI text, it will be hidden. Uh, and then we want to update this score with an actual value whenever we land. So if the player ship lands on the uh, the landing pad, it should update that, give it a new score. Next landing pad, another score, and then we'll have it update the total score and show that. So uh, if we open up the GUI text, uh, GUI script, I mean, and in here under the function LZ activated. Uh, we're going to uh, tell the score text to uh, change its number. Uh, and I guess first we'll create the variable for that. So we can hold it in there. Uh, so variable score text. And its type is just a GUI text. And while we're at it, we'll also, we'll also create the one for the uh, uh, total score text. So we have our uh, our variables created. Uh, if we go back down to the function LZ activated now, we can do something with those. And I will just say score text and dot text because again Unity knows that it's a GUI text. I can just go dot text and I'll directly access the text in it. We'll say equals. And we have to type out the uh, the full text that we want in it. So in this case, it's score dash, and then a space, and then we go the uh, put the plus sign to tell we're going to add another. Um, I guess you could say uh, another section to this uh, the full string, and then we just want to add the level score. Oops, we need to create that variable too, but we'll add it in in a second. Uh, so plus the level score. Uh, above that, we're going to want to actually update that level score. So let's say level score. And I could do level score equals level score plus 500, but that's a little bit of a shortcut if I just go plus equals 500. Uh, and that's a nice way to just skip a little bit of extra typing. Uh, the same as if I just wanted to add 1 to it, I could do level score plus plus is adding 1, or minus minus is subtracting 1. If I do plus equals, or you can do minus equals, times equals, anytime you do it uh, in that uh, pattern, it'll simply take the original here and then add this number onto it nice and quickly. 
So uh, in this case, every time the player lands on a landing pad, uh, we'll add 500 to their score, and then we'll update the um, the display to show that new score. So let's uh, again go back and create that level score variable. So make sure we have that variable level score, and that'll just be an integer, nice and simple. Okay, and let's arg. Let's break Unity. Okay, um, let's give that a test and make sure it properly updates. Uh, oops, of course we have to actually assign that in the uh, in the inspector. So we'll drag in the score text onto score text and the same for score text total to where it belongs. And give that another try. There we go. So the score updates. We now have a score of 500, and it will add on if we go over to the other. Bit of a long trip here. Hopefully our levels are much more exciting than mine. Hooray! So now we have a score of 1,000. Okay, so we have that working. Let's go ahead and set up the final score to show properly. So going back to the uh, in-game GUI, uh, under the function win we'll do some, uh, some more player prefs magic. Uh, and first thing we want to do is just add in the option to uh, number one check if there's already a score. Uh, if there is then we're going to add to it. If not, create it and then add to it. Uh, just in case this is the first level that's being played, we don't want to generate any, any errors if the integer, uh, I'm sorry, the key uh, in the player prefs doesn't already exist. So we'll do a uh, if statement. So if player prefs dot has key and the key is going to be called player total score. So if that exists, then we're going to do the score updating. So if it does, then player prefs dot set key. I'm sorry, set int since it's uh, just an integer here. And the name of it is the player total score. And we're going to make it the uh, actually this. Except we're going to get it. So we're getting the previous total score. and we're adding on the level score. So if we have a total score already uh, from a previous level, we're going to uh, add the, uh, the level score onto it. So just like so. And otherwise, so if there isn't already a player total score, we're going to create it. except it's going to be simply the level score since this is the first time playing through. Nothing to add it on to. And again, I'm, I'm putting this before the player save just to make sure that once I've set it, it is then saved. And then lastly, we'll just want to update the uh, total score text item and turn it on so it shows. So we'll say uh, score text underscore total dot text equals and that would be the player prefs dot get int oops player total score oh, I'm sorry that will come at the end uh, just like the regular score it's going to be First the string parts, and then we'll add that on to the end. And this I will actually move, uh, it doesn't truly matter, but just to keep it a little cleaner, I'm going to move that after the player save.
and then we're going to turn the score text on so we can actually see it. Total dot enabled equals true. And whenever there's something with a checkbox, like uh, how we turn that on and off, you can simply turn the uh, uh, access that using this enabled uh, option here. So enabled equals true or false will turn it on and off. Okay, so we have that set. Any errors? Doesn't appear so. Let's give it a quick play. So if we move over here, that and actually I know there's still a bug in this level that we're going to fix at the end. I can double land on this. On this side. Hit it too hard. Let's give that another try. So if we land on it and let's pretend I'm landing on another one. Hooray! Okay, so our score is 1,000. Our total score, as it should be in this case, is 1,000. Uh, now if we had completed another level, that would keep adding on to it and so forth. One problem here, you'll notice if you keep playing this over and over, we're saving this into our player prefs. So if I play this, this will make a little more sense. I'm just doing it this way. Land it. Land it again. Now we have a total score of 2,000 all of a sudden because it's still pulling that info from the player prefs. Uh, we haven't cleared it out uh, since we're just playing it from the level. So we're going to add something to the main level real quick just to fix that little glitch. Uh, so if in your scripts, open up the main menu GUI. And we'll add one quick thing. On the start game, we're going to say player prefs dot delete all just like so. And what this will do is delete out, clear out all the player prefs uh, settings that we have in there or any, any data at all. So if you need to reset, you can simply go back to your main menu and click the start new game button. And now if we land or anything like that, uh, well, it'll work properly. So just a quick way to clean out the pre player prefs and keep it working properly. Also, of course, make sure that when people play through, uh, they aren't keeping any old scores going on. So uh, we have that. Looks good. Uh, one thing you can do uh, is maybe set, uh, just like the GUI texture, we can change the uh, color of the text on this if you choose the actual font itself. And then just set the font color to something a little more exciting perhaps. And you have to hit the apply button for it to show up. And do the same with the other texture. So maybe that looks a little better. Make sure we turn that off so it doesn't show up until it's uh, until we've landed on it. And there we have that. Um, I guess the last thing to do other than that glitch I mentioned uh, a second ago uh, is to set up a couple more GUI textures so that this looks a little fancier when we win and lose. And I'm going to do that by adding in uh, some success and failure titles. So uh, let's select the success and go game object, create other GUI texture. That'll drop right in there, maybe set it up a bit higher. And we're going to do the same thing with failure. And I would actually like that to be at just about the same place. There, looks perfect actually. And with each of these, I'm going to, uh, number one, change the name so I can find them a little easier. If I add the GUI at the front, they'll be in the same location, and then turn them off. Uh, and then back in the in-game GUI, uh, on the win, uh, just like we turned on uh, the uh, total score text, Wherever that was, there we go, and enabled. I'm going to also enable the uh, win text and lose uh, the texture. Uh, we'll create the variable first also. So variable, uh, let's see, win texture. And the type is a GUI texture again. Variable lose texture, GUI texture. So back down on the win, we're going to say uh, win texture dot enabled equals true. Or in the lose, we will say lose texture dot enabled 
equals true. And of course, uh, we need to assign those textures. So in the GUI, uh, we'll drag in the GUI failure into the lose and the GUI success into the win. Uh, with these GUI textures, uh, we'll make them look a little prettier. It's always good to do. Uh, and the failure, we'll set that to, you know, just put anything, whatever, you know, feels failurely um, to you. And the same for success, I'll do. Something like so. Uh, up to your artistic taste, of course. Okay, let's give that a quick test. If we close the show, wait those three seconds, and come on. There we go. Okay, so we have everything working here other than the GUI and the in game uh, menu still needs to have the new GUI skin applied. And we also need to fix that uh, bug where you can land on the. Uh, the landing pad twice. Let's do that one real quick. Uh, if you open up the landing pad script and under activate, very simply we'll just do um, first again <laughs> up top. I have a tendency not to create my variables first. Uh, bad thing, don't get into that habit. Uh, I'm going to say variable is activated and the type is a boolean, so true or false, and it equals false. And then on activate, I'm actually going to say if not is activated. And these will all go inside of that. So only if this landing pad hasn't already been activated is it going to allow itself to activate again. So pretty simple, but nice quick fix so that you can double activate any of these landing pads. Let's make sure that works real quick. Activate it once, and something is not working properly. <laughs> uh, let's go back and check that code, see what I missed here. Oh, of course, uh, after we activate it, we need to tell it that it's activated. Uh, so is activated equals true. Otherwise, naturally, that will never become true. Let's give that a, another try. Once, fingers crossed. Hooray! Okay. <laughs> there we go. So, no more cheating for anyone out there. Um, so, uh, that'll be fixed. Okay, so we have um, our game set up, looking pretty, working. Um, again, there's some things, uh, as always with any game you're making, that you'll see um, that probably could be made better, fancier. Um, work more uh, properly things like um, if you remember in the original game that I showed the uh, the camera would follow uh, the ship around and do some fancy things like that <clears throat> um, a fuel meter various things like that uh, we'll see if there's anything that you guys would like to request as well for uh, for our final tutorial to go into some more advanced things and really make this uh, an even sexier game uh, post them up uh, otherwise, there's a couple I have in mind for sure that we'll be getting around to uh, hopefully next week. But uh, for the majority, uh, the real portion of this game, uh, if you've just completed this tutorial and all the finals, uh, all the previous, uh, congratulations. And I uh, hope you enjoyed going through it and possibly see you in the next series of tutorials uh, as well as the follow-up to this. Okay, thanks much and uh, keep checking for new ones.